It is October 13th, 2016, and I want to go over a few things to clarify. I want to make sure I don't want people to get complacent in thinking that the United States is not going to be attacked by Russia. In fact, there are scriptures that prove that the United States is going to be attacked by somebody. And it is written... Um... I'll see if I can find it first. Um, <clears throat> um, Genesis 49 and verse 22, beginning with and it continues down here in verse 20, Genesis 49 and verse 22. Joseph is a fruitful bough, even a fruitful bough by a well, whose branches run over the wall. That's Ephraim and Manasseh, folks. The archers have sorely grieved him and shot at him and hated him, but his bow abode in strength and the arms of his hands were made strong by the hands of the mighty God of Jacob. Now, so the implication, and remember, in the beginning of this chapter, he says, Jacob says, he called his sons and said, gather yourselves together that I may tell you which would befall you in the last days. So this is the last days when this happens. This means Joseph is going to be attacked. But he will win. But the attack will be extremely grievous. And today we have rumblings of nuclear war. Okay. <clears throat> now, the previous video I have as a title that uh, nuclear war, but first... The war, uh, the, the Ezekiel 38 war. I may have mislabeled that. <clears throat> what I mean is, a nuclear war does not exactly mean complete annihilation. I mean, Japan proves that. Because that was your first nuclear war. However, if you, if you read Ezekiel 38, you will see that Jehovah said that he is going to turn Gog and Magog back or drag them back from where they are attacking and bring them forth for judgment to the land of Israel. Now, um, Zechariah says, Zechariah 10 verse 6 says, I will strengthen Judah and save the tribes of Joseph. Well, the tribes of Joseph are actually Ephraim and Manasseh and the rest of the ten tribes, because those are the uh, tribes that Ephraim ruled over in the days of uh, <clears throat> the divided kingdoms in Israel. Okay? So let me read that. I will strengthen the house of Joseph and say, uh, uh, strengthen the house of Judah and save the house of Joseph. Now, when the northern army comes in, this is when he's going to destroy the northern army that's strengthening Judah and save Joseph. That is an Isaiah 60, where he gathers them from the ends of the earth. Now, there are preachers out there who are misconstruing Hannah's prayer. Who is Hannah? Hannah is the mother of Samuel the prophet. And... I will read this prayer. And Hannah prayed. This is um, 2 Samuel, no, 1 Samuel 2 and verse 1. Hannah prayed and said, My heart rejoiced in Jehovah. My horn is exalted in Jehovah. My mouth is enlarged over my enemies because I rejoice in your salvation. There is none holy as Jehovah, for there is none besides you, neither is there any rock like our Elohim. Speak no more so exceedingly proudly. And yes, the enemies are doing this. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth, for Jehovah is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. The bows of the mighty men are broken, and they that stumbled are girded with strength. 
the bows of the mighty men, read Ezekiel 39, and you will have your answer. They that are full have hired themselves out for bread. They that were hungry cease to be hungry. Those that the barren has borne seven, so that the barren has borne seven, and she that has many children is waxed feeble. Jehovah kills and makes alive. He brings down to the grave and brings up in resurrection. Jehovah makes poor and makes rich. He brings low and lifts up. He raises up the poor from the dust and lifts up the beggar from the dunghill to set them in among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth belong to Jehovah and he has set the world upon them. He will keep the feet of his saints, that is Israel and all Rahab's, and the wicked shall be silent in darkness. This it alludes to the fifth trumpet, fifth plague of darkness upon the kingdom of the beast, while all Israel and all the Rahab's are traveling back to the Holy Land, as it is written in Isaiah 60 and verse 8. On flying ships. The adversaries of Jehovah shall be broken to pieces. Out of heaven he shall thunder upon them. Jehovah shall judge the ends of the earth. And these pastors, they say that that word judges condemnation. In this case it is not, and I will prove it today. And he shall give king uh, strength unto his king, which is Yeshua, and exalt the horn of his anointed, the Messiah. Now, the ends of the earth. So it's in Isaiah, I mean, yes, it's in Isaiah 45. So I will go there. Verse 22. And I will read it, verse 22, Look unto me, and be you saved all the ends of the earth, for I am Jehovah, and there is none else. Oh, it sounds a whole lot like Hannah's prayer, doesn't it? It is because it is a fulfillment of Hannah's prayer. Concerning who? Concerning Israel. Verse 17 of the same chapter, a few verses before, for Israel shall be saved. Oh boy, the Gentiles hate this scripture. Save from who? Save from Satan. Save from the beast, the kings of this earth. Save from Babylon, the nations of this earth. Shall be saved in Jehovah with an everlasting salvation. For you shall not be ashamed nor confounded in a world that has no end. Ha! Huh, this world is going to end, folks. Now, so in context, this is Israel that are living in the ends of the earth. Okay? So, once again, these Bible scholars with degrees... Of every kind got this one wrong. I won't mention any names here today. So how will they be saved? And remember, we just read the words of Jacob, what's going to befall Joseph. And Zechariah shows what's happening, what's going to happen here. In those days, I will strengthen the house of Judah and will save who needs salvation. I'll tell you who needs salvation, those who are being attacked. Those who are being massacred. That's right. I will save the house of Joseph and bring them again to place them, for I will have mercy upon them. So in those days, he's going to strengthen the Jews that are in Israel with the war, the Ezekiel 38 and 39 war, and save the house of Joseph. Why? Because the house of Joseph is being attacked 
And if it weren't for the holy arm of Jehovah, the God of Israel, Joseph would lose. So what I'm saying is I don't want to, people to get the idea that there won't be a war here in the United States. We won't, that we won't be attacked. Because I hear, what I'm trying to tell you is Satan, the evil angel, hates Israel. Satan wants Israel exterminated. He wants the Israelis over there in the Holy Land exterminated, and he wants the Isra Israelis over here in the United States exterminated. And if that means to wipe out the entire United States, the more the better. This is the reason why, <clears throat> even in the Muslim world, they curse Israel and they curse the United States. They call the United States the great Satan and they call Israel the little Satan. That's the reason. Now, I'm not saying everybody in the United States is Israel. That's, that, would, that would be false. No. But the bulk of the lost sheep of the house of Israel is in the United States. But not just in the United States or in all nations around the world. But the bulk are here. This is the reason why the so United States is so hated, so vilified by the nations around the world and by its own government. The United States' own government hates the Constitution. The Constitution was provided in order to keep this people who were persecuted in Europe for thousands of years to finally provide them some relief. The government, the governments that came afterwards hate the Constitution. They hate relief for this people. In fact, they want, if they can't, exterminate the people from within, they will try to just drive them out by bringing in every terrorist from every nation they can find in this country to get rid of these people. And you realize now why this is happening, why they're inviting all these terrorists in. So, let me remind you folks that during the plague of darkness, all Israel from the ends of the earth are going to be brought in. Isaiah 60, and let's use the New Living Translation. Isaiah 60, and starting in verse 8. And what do I see flying like clouds to Israel, like doves to their nest? They are ships. Flying? ships from the ends of the earth and there is your justice that Hannah was talking about in 1st Samuel 2 there is your judgment for the ends of the earth they are ships from the ends of the earth from lands that trust in me in God we trust or in Elohim we trust Led by the great ships of Tarshish. So now we understand what the dispute is going on in Ezekiel 38 where it says, The merchants of Tarshish and their young lions are going to be disputing with Gog and Magog concerning the land of Israel. And indeed, this may be what this Syrian war is really all about. In fact, I am certain that that's what it's all about. It's just that the leadership of the United States, the military, especially do not want that exposed. But make no mistake about it. This is what it's all about. It's all about the land of Israel. It's about the, the armies of the north wanting to take the land of Israel. And when you read when you read Isaiah 60, in the beginning of it, it talks about the plague of darkness. The fifth trumpet, the fifth vial in the book of Revelation, verse 2. Well, I'll start in verse 1. Rise, arise, Jerusalem, let your light shine for all to see, for the glory of Jehovah rises to shine over you. Darkness as black as night covers all the nations of the earth. Yes, the kingdom of the beast, folks. But the glory of Jehovah rises and appears over you. All nations will come to your light. Mighty kings will come to see your radiance. So, 
And we see in verse 4, look and see, for everyone is coming home, your sons, your Jerusalem, your sons are coming from distant lands, and your daughters will be carried home. So you see, folks, this is all of what's, what's happening in the world today. All these military readiness is all about the world trying to destroy Israel wherever they live. Make no mistake about it. If you are a believer, you are a target. If you are a Jew or a lost Israelite, you are a target. But Jehovah, it is time for Jehovah to come and save all Israel. 